everybody, welcome to Starseed Mission Support. Ah, I've just got to change the settings on um, the stream here on Facebook so I can see your chat boxes coming in. And there you go. So welcome, welcome everybody. This week we're exploring self-love, kind of a big topic. <laughs> it's like you go through these waves with these healings and every time you think you get someplace and then the universe shows you through experience, you know, where you actually are in your process of self-love. Maybe it's somebody that really wants to um, move through your boundary maybe someone that really wants to access your energy maybe it's just someone that comes in and triggers you in the places so that we can see where we are in our process and so I've had so many conversations about self-love this week um, with all of my clients and all of my friends so that's how I usually know what the theme of the week is going to be for these conversations is when there is a really clear and repetitive pattern in my conversations. And this week's theme is self-love and it's a complex and multifaceted discussion. So welcome to the space. Take a deep breath. We're going to move in a slower frequency than usual today to really soothe our nervous system and soothe these somatic bodies that we have. I think that our entire time together is going to be very healing for ourself. And so just sit back, relax, and uh, yeah, welcome.
folks. <laughs> um, the focus on my little camera. I'm still a little fuzzy. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's just what we got today. It's super hot here in New Mexico. There's like a crazy heat wave. It doesn't normally get up into the 90s, but it's like in the mid-high 90s today. And I am sweaty. It is awesome. <laughs> it's really hot, but the spirits are also really high. And so I'm really, really joyful to open up this discussion today about self-love. Such a pertinent discussion, especially for us empaths and the sensitive beings existing inside of this very harsh and often judgmental reality. You know, we've kind of all um, picked up different habits of thinking about ourselves, of relating to ourselves from our parents, from our teachers, from the TV, to the point where, you know, self-deprecation and self-hatred and putting ourselves down and making ourselves small, these energies have become normalized. Right? If you are actually confident and you actually love yourself, sometimes society will perceive that as you know arrogance. And of course, there is actual arrogance or narcissism, which is just the opposite side of this, the coin of this ego distortion. But uh, I want to focus on these, um, this anti-ego energy, because for the most part, you know, for all of us light workers, is the anti-ego ego that we deal with and we think that false modesty is somehow better than the arrogance but is really the same distortion just on the other side of the spectrum and so i like to say having a reverse ego it's still having an ego right it's just our inability to perceive and accept ourselves exactly as we are and so we want this to be a very active um an active experience today so let's just start by i gotta hold this mic let's start by just rubbing our hands together <laughs> and just kind of calming and activating our nervous system and feel how that immediately start to make our body tingle and almost immediately brings us back into the awareness of our body this is really awkward <laughs> so we're gonna rub our hands together really gently and then just place your heart, I mean, your hands over your heart. And all that energy that we just built up in our hands, feel it flow into our heart, into our body. It's going to be a very body-focused and somatic session today. I'm really excited. It's just calms the nervous system. And just think for a moment, you know, I love myself. I love myself. I am perfect. I am a perfectly wanted and extraordinarily unique and perfect creation child of this brilliant infinite universe. And all that is beautiful in the world, I deserve to be a part of, to feel, to share, to experience. <sighs> and then go ahead and rub our hands together again. And just sending that love we were just holding in our heart right into our hands. Again, we're activating our nerve endings. And maybe that even, it makes the top of my head tingle when I do that. But does it? activate any other place in your body how is your body feeling today so after we rub our hands we're going to put our hands right over our solar plexus just like between our rib cage under right above our navel <sighs> just tune into how our solar plexus is feeling are we feeling stable confident like the universe has got our back because we have our own back and we support ourselves or maybe it feels a little bit wobbly and we feel a little bit disconnected and that's totally perfectly okay too so in this now moment we're just connecting to our solar plexus 
we say, I am the light of divinity. And if you feel like crying, you're safe, we're holding you, we love you so much. Just allow those emotions to flow. You don't have to try. You know, we just let go of any need to hold ourselves in any shape. To present ourselves as appropriate or beautiful or anything. Just be just as you are. And we say, I am the love of divinity. I am the perfection of the living universe. And say so we are, I am a magnificent, powerful, loving being of light. You know, as we bring in these frequencies of truth, right, that we are these beautiful source creator beings made of source light. We are divinity. We are brilliant. And somehow when we just bring those energies in that our body kind of begins to reject it, there's part of our being that's like, oh, no, I'm not that cool. That can't be me. I'm not really. I'm just this little, oh, I'm just this little despicable thing. And we can feel where those parts are whole hiding and usually it's our lower belly and our solar plexus and sometimes they're in other places too but you can almost feel the body resist and clench up and try to run away from that frequency and that's a really good thing to be aware of because it gives us the location that we can go and um, kind of have a chat with those parts that feel that way and then you know Maybe inspire them to pick up a different belief system. <sighs> so maybe take a couple of deep grounding breaths. And just releasing all the tension in your body. And I welcome, I welcome you into the space where you are absolutely free to be yourself. And some of your inner children might be shocked by this. <laughs> Because ever since we were little, you know, the way that we express ourselves, if it was, you know, loud or if it was inappropriate to the adults, they would shut us down. And from a very young age, we've learned that there are very specific confines to what is access acceptable for us to be, um, acceptable ways and energies for us to express. And so when we grow up, you know, we become these rigid beings that care a lot about what other people think because our tribal survival depends on it. Like, it's a very human thing to seek acceptance because if your tribe accepts you, for the most part, in our tribal civilizations, that would mean that you would have food to eat and you're protected in the tribe. And so you want to belong and you want to fit in so that, you know, it, it improves your chances of surviving in the wild. Now, those patterns, um, when applied into our modern life, they can kind of spin um, into uh, these patterns where we become, you know, we care about what other people might think of us more than what brings us joy. And I feel like the false matrix especially capitalizes on natural human, I call them vulnerabilities, right? It's kind of like how our tongue was designed to taste sweetness. Because in nature, sweet things are usually things that are actually good for us to eat, like fruits. And so because the body naturally has this desire for sweetness, the false matrix created white sugar that is literally a poison and is just there to trick what is something so natural and innocent about the body. So is it a bad thing that the body likes sugar? No, the body was designed that way to be intelligent inside of a natural system. But inside the false matrix, all of these uh, very intrinsic and innocent capacities of the body become subje subjected to distortion. And that goes to say that, you know, we are naturally um, inclined to exploring our sexuality because our body is very sexual being. 
our bodies are our sexual being. We experience this life in a sexual and sensual and physical and somatic way. And so the false matrix has figured out how to hook into that and distort it. And similarly, our desire to fit in and our desire to be accepted by tribe has been um, used as a virus to inject us with the fear that if we didn't look a certain way or acted in a certain way, that we would then be rejected um, by society. And so in this space here right now, I just invite you to allow those parts to feel absolutely free and safe to be themselves in their desires, in their curiosities, in their wantings, in their thirst for experience, because this is what source also is, is this force of consciousness that is thirsty to experience itself and to learn and to evolve and to increase in its complexity um, of itself. And so that's all we are as human beings on this planet is, a, is an emanation and a continuation of that universal force that is just trying to evolve and experience. And so these forces inside of our bodies that are curious, this curiosity that has been shut down from such a young age when, you know, you just wanted to chase a butterfly, but your teacher was like, you have to sit in this chair and listen to this really boring thing for eight hours. <laughs> and through all of those processes, we become trapped and we never learn how to value our own spark of curiosity Right, because we've never been taught. Our parents and our schools, they've never um, appreciated and valued that spark of our innate, innocent curiosity and drive for life. And so in this process of waking up, it's this process of reconditioning or deconditioning and restoring ourselves back into these innocent beings that are curious and desire um to experience Whew. and i think that this is the root of self-love is that allowance is to allow ourselves, almost give ourselves permission to um, exist and th think and express ourself that feels good for us outside of the confines of what society and other people projects so for example you know we just really want to i don't know what's a good example like we just really want to have an ice cream cone but this is kind of a bad example or like i just want to really take a bath or i really just want to take some days off but instead of following through with those desires we say, well, actually, you know, my family needs me to do this and society would think that whatever else. And <laughs> so instead of doing that thing that's good for me, I'm going to continue to do things um, that other people expect me to or that society expects me to. And I know that there is a you know, there's a certain line because some of us do have children and we do have responsibilities. And so it's not always possible to, you know, live just for ourselves. but it's to this point where for the most part, any time that we do anything for ourselves, it feels like it's selfish. This is something that I go through. You know, I've been in this process of realizing that I actually need to get a car because I actually don't have my own car. And um, I realized that, you know, in order for me to do the grid work that I do is really important for me to have my own vehicle. But then I went to try to get this vehicle and just got totally denied by the universe. And I realized that there were parts of me that didn't even believe that I deserve to have a vehicle. And part of that is these past life vows of renunciation that we made. You know, in order to be a spiritual person, we have to renounce the 3D world. And I think that in the past, during the Kali Yuga, when the reality was so dense, this was true. You know, we did have to renounce in certain ways to even exist in a certain vibration to do our spiritual work. But at this point on Earth now, in this time, I feel like it's a lot different. And so I'm sitting in the car with my girlfriend 
and I'm like, I don't think I deserve to have a car. And, you know, <laughs> she was like, she was like, um, why, like, do you feel like, you know, that's selfish? And I was like, yeah, I feel like it's selfish. I feel like having what I want and doing what I like, it's selfish. And this is like the kind of the crux of one of the anti-self viruses, right? <sighs> that taking care of ourself and receiving all of the brilliance all of the brilliance that this world has to offer is selfish. And this is something that is at the root of the unworthiness. Now look, if all the humans knew who we really were, who we really were, that we were these powerful, delightful, perfect God beings that were created to experience all of the magnificent things in this world, if we truly knew that, could we be controlled? Absolutely not. And so how do we actually go about mind controlling a whole civilization or a whole planet of highly intelligent spiritual beings. Well, we'd have to somehow make them believe that they are not worthy of life and that in fact, they are not worthy of love and worthy of you know even their own love, nevertheless being connected to love of the divine. And when these viruses are successfully injected into the human population, what happens is that, you know, when that anti-self virus, that anti-self virus, you know, this pri primor primarily exists in the solar plexus, um, as this is our sense of self, right? So for the most part, people are existing in this version of the sense of self, you know, like this. I am ugly. I'm not good enough. I am not really that smart. Um, I'm not important. In order for people to like me, I have to be something that's that I'm not. And we think about how many teenagers are constantly inundated with these messages on mainstream media and in the pop music and all of these things and even these distorted romance, right? It's all about trying to get the guy and like looking a certain way to get that attention instead of just being yourself. Um, and so when we have a civilization of people that are in the anti-self energy, then it's very easy for these people to uh, be controlled because the anti-self energy, it's the opposite of being in the self. <laughs> it's the opposite of knowing that you are a divine uh, creator being that's infinitely worthy of all of the delights and beautiful bounteousness that the universe has to offer. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I see this pattern that because we're spiritual and because we have these gifts and because we think that we can help others, that when, that sometimes we actually receive our sense of worthiness, that our sense of worthiness actually hinges on us helping others. And that's a really tricky place to be because then it's actually not an act of service to, I mean, service to other. It's actually an act of service to self, even when you're helping other people, because the underlying energy of you helping others is actually to gain a sense of worthiness. And that's a really tricky place to be. Um, and I see that pattern a lot in the spiritual community, because there's that part of us that just don't believe that we are worthy of being loved. And so I'm really right here, bringing this frequency right here to be through together. All right, and I can feel that energy bubbling in the solar plexus. And so let's go ahead and do just a little, just hug, give yourself a big hug. Just wrap your arms around yourself and close your eyes. So Bridget says, I often put myself last so often that sometimes I'm so tired that I cry in tired despair. 
for not acknowledging myself. And I totally resonate with that. I've been there myself quite often, even recently. And that's why this self-love energy is coming in so strong. And I'm getting tested left and right. The universe is like, have you learned this lesson yet? And so we're just going to hold ourselves for a moment here and just give yourself a hug and close your eyes and kind of gently sway back and forth. And what I like to do is imagine that you are a, a long seaweed in a shallow ocean and there's sunlight coming through the water. The water is really warm and you're with your seaweed friends and we're all just dancing and we're feeling the waves of the water and we're just simply existing simply existing as this seaweed and we can feel that brilliant sunlight coming through the water and it feels so nourishing on our skin body And there's really nothing to do and nowhere to go. And just by existing, you are an intricate part of the ecosystem that is receiving the love and light of life. And you're giving, you know, whatever phytoplanktons and oxygen or whatever that you're, <laughs> as a seaweed, is emitting into the water that is supporting other life forms. Just for this now moment. <sighs> so the self-healing technique that I'm going to show you guys today, it's an extension of that feeling. Oh. And so... I'm feeling this um, specific energy in the solar plexus, so I want to dive into it a little bit because I feel like this is a trauma network that is really prevalent in this collective energy at this time. <sighs> okay, and what I'm being guided to share at this time is actually a, a guided meditation. So we are going to do um, our, it's a little bit jambled, it's different. It's different, different is good. So we're gonna do a little meditation because what we need to do is connect in with our higher self energy, right? And when we go up and connect into the higher self energy and the part of ourself that's outside of the body and outside of the physical confinements um, of our beliefs and our ancestral energies and all the things that have been programmed in us. And we move into the place where we are just divine love itself. We can begin to bring those energies down into the body. And so let's begin there. So I invite you to just come into this meditation with me. Just close your eyes. Just begin to breathe into the body. Maybe you want to breathe with a subtle smile on your face and see how that changes and supports you moving into the love energy. And as we breathe and smile into our being, feel into your cranium, feel into your mind to the frequency of your thoughts and if there are confines to your mind you know maybe you feel like your brain is just the circumference of your skull maybe you feel like it's just a little bit larger than that but do you feel like there's an edge to your mind
And just be aware of that. Be aware of the size of your mind. Be aware of the vibration of your thoughts. Be aware of any sensation or density you might be feeling in your body. We're not trying to change them or do something about it. Just becoming aware with our subtle gaze of unconditional love and acceptance. Okay, so I'm going to call in our highest source connected aspects of self as well as our angelic galactic team who work in alliance with the unified original source field of love, divine love. And I'm requesting for our support teams to begin to open our third eye and crown chakras to open up a pathway up into our soul star chakra about 8 to 12 inches above our head. Whew. And you might immediately already feel energies begin to open. And just continue to breathe. Allow the energy to work for you. Or just gently opening up our crown chakra i'm going to slowly move our awareness up into the soul star okay and we're going to tune into the vibration of our soul tune into the vibration of this deep inner part of ourself that almost you know, usually takes the back seat. It's this peaceful, kind of full of inner knowing, just ever present core pillar of our being deep inside. We're connecting to that deep part of ourself beyond our thoughts and emotions and beliefs and ideas. connecting up through that vibration just feeling into what our soul feels like outside of this body outside of these energies and i want you to just begin to expand the cranium there were confines to the size of your mind if it seems like your mind is just this ball that has an, an end to it dissolve that and expand through it into infinity and just continue to do that Whew. And what we're realizing here is just that just outside of our thoughts and worries and beliefs and pain is actually this ever expansive field of living love and living light. That's what you're actually made of. And from this higher vantage point, we're going to have a better capability of shifting things inside of our body, okay? So in this place of recognizing, but actually not just believing, but experiencing yourself as unified with divine light and, and source consciousness, We realize that what's going on on the planet right now is pretty dire and that you, your human being, your incarnation, your experience, your presence on earth, it's important. And it's not that it's your personality or your ego that's important, but it's your devotion and your recognition of divinity that's important because when you realize and recognize yourself as divine, you are actually installing that energy into the planet and you're directly supporting humanity in that remembrance, right? 
how are we supposed to liberate the planet if we're still feeling trapped and imprisoned inside of our own body and consciousness if we haven't even gotten into the freedom of self-love and self-love you know on the other hand is really just self-recognition or self-acknowledgement just the self just recognizing you know how precious and profound it is that you exist And when we're connected to our higher self energy, this is really powerful because this energy is closer to truth and thus it has the ability to overwrite anything that other people have told you. Oh, you know, you got a 43% in math class, you're dumb. Or I, I remember in high school, my math teacher told me that if I got into college, I would be lucky and that hopefully I do something with my life because my math scores were not doing it for her. And different things that people say like that, our parents, school, you know, they really chip away at our self-esteem when those things that society values aren't even the things that make us valuable. This divine light is what makes you valuable, is what makes you unique, is what makes you real and true. And so sometimes I think, you know, what if, say, Kuan Yin or Mary Magdalene or Isis or the white buffalo calf woman, what if they just walked in the door? How would I treat them? How would I respect them? How would I feel about them? I would probably be in reverence and respect and I would want to create, you know, space around them and feed them nourishing food and then we have to realize that in this cycle we are the beings that are on the planet holding that vibration right just being a pillar of divinity that's all it is it doesn't have to be complicated it's just a pillar of divine love a pillar of divine connection a pillar of truth Ooh. And I think when we orient ourselves to that awareness and really allow that energy to percolate into the body, So bird on a tree says an implant is hindering me to expand the mind. Repressed trauma is hindering to love and brain because they are having their own life coexisting next to me. I, okay. So here's the thing. We have to relax and let go. Just try to. I know that it can be hard when we feel like we can't. Or we feel like there's something more powerful than you. And there's a shortcut, right? It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be hard. It could be easy. As long as, as soon as we realize, oh, I'm, I'm God. And that there is infinite love and light. And that we have support. Right? So I'm going to call, and this is something that you can do, but I'm going to call on the higher self and the galactic team of bird on a tree. Whew. I'm going to request for this implant to be removed and any trauma that's hindering her experience of love and her infinite consciousness to be completely cleared from her being. And we're also requesting for support in her reconnection to the divine spark inside of her. Oh. 
And allow these parts that feel like trauma gives us a sense of self-worth and pain gives us a sense of, you know, egoism, whatever it is, that those parts be merged and brought back into the coarsal fractal. And sometimes it's as easy as just surrendering, like really relaxing, really no longer holding ourselves in any patterns. And sometimes it could feel like dying. I mean, I've done 5-MeO DMT. And when you take 5-MeO DMT, it almost like is this forced dissolution and you just like, basically it feels like you're dying, right? Um, Cause all of these confines and patterns that make you feel like you're you, you're an individual, um, they begin to dissolve. And it's like these days when we begin to meditate, it just begins to feel that way. And really, this the state of being is becoming a lot more accessible because the frequency that's on the planet. And I feel like this is really important for us to be able to step outside of our character, to go back home. And this is, you know, when people say they're homesick, this is something that, you know, I spend a lot of time just going and meditating and being in oneness with the universe because that is how we can have a vacation from our work here. And the more that we do that, the more our human parts are soothed to know that, you know, we're not here alone. And, and the feeling of being here alone is also something that perpetuates this anti-self, you know, self-hatred programming. Because it's almost like, it's like telling that your fragmented human self needs to be God, but because they're separate from God, they can't ever be that. And so it just feels like it's perpetually disappointing and not good enough when really it needs to just plug itself back in and realize that it's not here to do anything besides be an open channel, to be in alignment and allow the creativity of all that is to be able to move through you. And in the false matrix, we're taught that we have to struggle and cling in order to get anything done, in order to accomplish anything, in order to um, achieve any level of greatness. And this is another part of that anti-self program, right? That when we actually just sit back and Realize that just by being is enough. Just by existing is enough. Just by dissolving and experiencing whole body bliss, not only is it that enough, it's actually what you were created to experience. And then from that place of bliss, you become inspired to do other things that bring you more bliss. And oftentimes that is helping others reach that same place of joy and so another component of self-love that um, is coming in and actually has to do with the divine masculine energy our inner divine masculine energy. And um, <laughs> so uh, this is actually quite sad. We had a, um, a beautiful fire ceremony a little while ago and there was like seven or eight of us in the circle. And somebody said, raise your hand if you had a emotionally unavailable or absent father. And every single person in that circle raised their hand or i think it was like 
Raise your hand if you had a emotionally and present supportive father and nobody raise your hand. Either one of those. I can't remember exactly. But basically really sad that none of the people in that whole circle had a present and supportive and emotionally available father. And I think that this is obviously then a very pervasive issue on the planet. And if we had no... Um, role model for that energy right because that masculine energy it protects it creates space it reveres um, it protects what's sacred it creates space around what's sacred it creates structure for love to flow and be experienced and so when that air masculine energy is missing it's almost like we don't even know what to do or how to support ourselves how to love ourselves um, and loving ourselves isn't always, you know, getting an ice cream cone or having a nap. Sometimes it's doing something that you really don't like doing, you know, like stretching or meditating or something that you just can't seem to get yourself to do. Sometimes loving yourself is creating structure. And I find that creating structure is something that a lot of us intuitive light workers have a hard time doing because of that just you know missing divine masculine energy and so you know for example if you are the type to overgive that is a sign that the inner masculine is missing because he's not protecting your energy and he's not there to say no and he's not there to create boundaries he's not there to respect your energy Right? And sometimes we have inner masculine that are feeling unworthy and so they are, um, they do seek that worthiness through people pleasing. And what we're trying to get to is a place where we're just overflowing. We're overflowing with so much joy and delight from our own expansive, curious exploration of life that it just spills out from us and touches everything and awakens everything into life that's the place that we want to be and that requires such a radical level of self-love and that self-love needs to be present in every now moment right it's like that inner masculine you know when the inner feminine is feeling any sort of emotions there's an instant response to support you and who and then the then the inner masculine is also the inner masculine's job to fully acknowledge to be fully aware because the inner feminine is the part of you that's already in the being right the inner feminine's already in connection with divinity is already a priestess is already a healer is already a shaman or whatever it is you want to call being in union with god a person that's being a person that's in union with their divine purpose. And so if there is doubt, if there is confusion, if there is self-criticism, you know that the inner masculine is not responding to the truth in a correct way. And then you can go in and correct that. Right? So the last couple months, they just keep drilling this message into my head and they're like, your skull is so thick. I'm like, yes, it is. I just can't get it through my thick head. Um, they're like, you are literally a lantern on this planet. And this goes out for every single person that's on this call right now listening to this. You are literally a precious lantern of God's love on this planet that is so needed. Your light and your love is so needed. Even if the false matrix try to beat it out of you, even if your parents told you that you're just daydreaming, even if your friends just said you're just full of yourself, screw all of that, okay? Bring it to this deep place inside of you where maybe you're just getting chills as I'm saying this. Like you are a lantern of divine love on this planet that is so needed. And then, you know, say there's a four-year-old 
right? This little four-year-old starseed, and you can just see all this brilliant divine love emanating from this beautiful child. Wouldn't you do everything in your power to protect and to cultivate and to support that child? Oh, sorry. I don't know why it's doing that thing. I'm going to hide. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, so this little four-year-old child, let's call her Lucy. She's like, I'm here to shine God's light and bring divinity back into the heart of humanity. And you're like, oh my God, you're so precious. I just want to love you and create platforms for you to shine your light. And make sure that nothing ever gets close to dimming that light. Now, they keep telling me that I have to activate that mother lioness that would go to protect that child to myself to fully recognize that our light is so needed and so precious and literally an emanation of God's prayer for the healing of this planet. Okay? We are literally here as an extension of God's prayer for the healing and the liberation of humanity. How profound is that? And this is not something that you can, I mean, it's not even something that you can go and be arrogant about because just the frequency of that knowing itself, it's profound, it's sacred. And so how can we create space around ourselves to really be a force of protection? Right? And this takes time. It's just about training your inner masculine, training that action energy. So it's like you wake up in the morning. What is some, What are you going to do? What's the first thing that you do? And this is really important. Doing some, the first thing that you do in your life when you wake up in the morning should be in an immediate action which aligns you with your highest God source self and your mission just to prove and show yourself what is of the highest priority to you. So you first wake up, you know, for me, as soon as I wake up, I just connect in with my soul and I say, I am the light of divine love. I am here for the liberation of all of life. I am here for the restoration of divinity to the center of humanity. I am here to be an experience of joy and freedom and all of those things. And that puts me in the right perspective and angle to go about the day to say, well, I really valued this life. And then I go on and ask, you know, what is needed? What energy do I need to remain in that vibration? And that's going to be different in every now moment. So let's say we feel like, um, and this is a concept. Now we're moving into um, this concept of proactive healing. So proactive healing just basically means that we are an active participant in our healing. We're not being dragged around by our triggers. We're not being stomped and we don't feel small like, oh no, there's this thing inside of me and it's so hard to heal and oh no, I got to go find a healer, you know, that energy. <laughs> it, being a proactive, being in proactive healing means that you recognize that you are a powerful being that's capable of healing yourself. You have the ability to connect to God's light in any moment because that's at the core of your being. And with those things, God's light and God's love, which is who you really are, you're capable of overcoming, overriding, and healing anything in your body. And so when you have that awareness, you know, proactive healing means prioritizing. So for me, I'm kind of a nerd. <laughs> Ever since I discovered that I can heal myself, I've been avidly doing that. Maybe for three to four hours a day, I made it my full-time job for the last maybe five or six years. 
and I still find things that need to heal because we've gone through a lot of crap on this planet <laughs> and there's just a lot of stuff but for the most part you know I am experiencing a lot of delight and joy and bliss in the excitement of truly being alive and part of that is giving thanks to this process that is called proactive healing so proactive healing means that we are an active participant in our healing so there's a lot of things that we notice about ourselves, right and we say oh i hope that one day that heals and we just assume that by some act of grace you know or by some synchronicity that it's just gonna heal itself and sometimes that really happens right sometimes the universe if it's really important it brings us this big teaching it triggers the heck out of us and then we're forced to do the healing and i believe that if we are ahead of our healing by doing proactive healing that we get triggered less and less because you know we're ahead of the game and the universe doesn't have to come in and kick our butt so somebody says do you think we can heal something once it has become physical manifestation in our body absolutely so even in my own practice i have witnessed my clients instantaneously healing and their tumors disappearing and you know their chronic illnesses healing their you know months long of uh intense migraines disappearing you know the physical body is just there to communicate with us and nothing is as physical as we think you know even the physical matrix of our cells is energy at the root of it so absolutely i believe that we can heal anything and i've only proven it to myself over and over and over again by witnessing all of this incredible healing that happens on a daily basis when people step into the gnosis that they are divine light divine love divinity at the core of our being i think that the more devout we are to that process of truly aligning with divinity the quicker and the easier it is that we begin to move through these difficulties Okay, so let's give an example of proactive healing. So for example, um, you notice that, you know, even that example that we tend to overextend ourselves. We're overextending ourselves until we're just on the floor crying and we're doing this all the time. And at this point we realize we're like, oh, this is a pattern that we have. And so proactive healing looks like waking up one morning, building an altar, creating a sacred space and saying i'm creating this ceremony space for me to go into this and to discover what are the underlying traumas what are the underlying energies what are the underlying belief systems that i need to rewrite and shift in order for this pattern to no longer be a thing in my life and that's possible we can do that i'm going to show you this technique that i use um, in this healing so i'm going to switch my so that I don't have to hold this while I um, while I share this practice with you. Oh, <laughs> I think it did it. <laughs> um, let me know if you can hear me. My computer did a weird thing. Um, I think that it's on the right mic now. Okay, it's working. Okay, my computer is really hot because it's a really hot day here today. <laughs> so let's, I hope that we make it through this without any crashes. Um, Okay, so this is a kind of a strange self-healing 
Um, it's really loud, I know, but this is kind of what we got to work with for now. I'm sorry. I hope that you can hear me still. Let me know that you can still hear me and that it's not too distracting um, because my computer is having a hard time with this heat. Okay. All right, so this is a very strange self-healing practice that I came up with intuitively because my body is very intelligent. I've known this for a very long time. My body has been my guide um, in this process for a very long time. And at this point, I'm in pretty much telepathic communication um, with my body of being able to just ask my body, you know, what it needs, what food it needs, what you know, water, supplements, whatever it is that it needs, it will actually just tell me. Um, and this is a place that you can get to in your communication with your vessel. I wish somebody would have told me this when I was a kid, but I think that we're going to write these manuals, you know, how to operate a body. I think that's great. So basically the first thing that I do, um, and let's just briefly bring back the example, okay? Actually, I'm going to use myself as an example here because I definitely feel like that overextension pattern that even still came up yesterday. It was very subtle. It was just, you know, somebody asking me to do something and then without even thinking about it, I just went ahead and initiated the process of doing it. And then I realized that I actually didn't have time or energy to do that thing. And it didn't exhaust me to the point where I was on the floor crying, but I definitely noticed the pattern come up. And I realized that this was still something that I need to work on because my inner masculine, again, instead of checking in with me first, he went in hand and did that people-pleasing thing and that could have really endangered our energy. So let's take that example of overextension. Okay, so normally if I'm going into a proactive self-healing session, I will build an altar or write down in my journal what my intention is. And sometimes the intention can simply be, I'm going in to find the highest priority distortion that I would like to um, heal, right? We can always find the highest priority thing in our life that needs to be healed if we don't consciously know or have picked up something that wants to be healed. So start with a journaling exercise, either writing down what you want to heal and address in this session or discovering a high priority distortion and then engaging in healing with that so i would put that on my altar and i would call in my galactic so we let's say um, connecting in with my higher self connecting in with my angelic and galactic team who work in alliance with the unified source consciousness of divine love And I'm intending for my altar to hold space and to amplify my intent to address this healing of whether it's that example or, you know, to figure out or to engage in a healing ceremony that would bring me into closer alignment with myself or figure out the highest priority pain point or trauma that needs to be addressed in order for me to come into my highest embodiment at this time. Whatever it is that you want to articulate that, okay? I hope that the idea is clear, okay? So now that I've created the space, you know, maybe you want to put on some just like ceremony music. If you went on Spotify and just looked up, you know, healing music or journey music, you'll find lots of playlists. You can just put one of those on. And uh, then off we go. So I usually start just in lotus like uh, cross-legged seating position and I put one hand on my heart and one hand on my belly and I'll just breathe for a moment and as I'm breathing I'm coming into my heart I'm just breathing into this core part of myself and reminding myself that I am a beautiful powerful being of divine love and that 
I have the courage and the power to be able to heal anything in my body and that no matter what came up today, I can stay connected to this neutral and deep and connected part of myself and I can lean on this part of myself to feel the pain or whatever it is that I've been running away from um, and I'm able to hold whatever pain that needs to come up in that race. Okay, I can do it. I'm here for myself. I have created this space specifically to love myself. And that doesn't always look like doing something enjoyable. And sometimes it looks like digging into the pain body. Right? Sometimes it looks like digging into the pain. And so I'm going to say, well, I'm intending for my body to activate self-healing mode. And sometimes what happens uh, that helped me tune into that as I'll start doing some of these circles and I can feel how the circle starts in the base of my spine and I can feel you know I try to tune into how my entire spine is feeling because a lot of times our tension is stored in the spinal column and spinal tension is actually really insidious and so I'm really tuning into how my body is feeling and through this slow circular motion I can feel how my spine and how free my spine is and how aware and connected to my spinal movement I am. And so here I'm just really sinking my consciousness, sinking my awareness with my body so that I can begin to almost merge and begin to communicate as the body consciousness. Okay? So at this point, I will discover, or I have feel that there is some tension in the lower part of my spine, especially when I'm tuning into this idea of love and of, you know, people pleasing. I realize that this is something that is stored in my hip, in my lower back. And so I want to sink my awareness to the place where that energy is stored. So for me, it's the lower back. So I'm just going to begin to gently move that part of my body because when we move very subtly and really slowly, we begin to shift a subtle energy through there that actually begins to penetrate the energy, right? It's really locked up. There's an energy that's stored there that's a pattern. And so in order for us to open it up, we don't want to rip it apart. We don't want to kick it out. What we want to do is... Um, just gently moving, gently moving so that we're opening and we're just bringing energy there. And, and, and this is, you know, we're doing this with love. We're moving with love. When we actually begin to, so our conscious mind is in the vibration of self-love, right? It's in the vibration of unconditional love. And then instead of bypassing everything by just staying in the love and light, we're actually sending our love and light to the places in our body that really needs it and this is when the crying is going to happen is when the screaming might start happening you know you might feel so much pain that you just want to fall on the floor and that's all really great i think you should do that because you know this is when it's a really subtle movement i can feel a lot of emotional energy just beginning to come up so i'm gonna just go and get more information. I'm going to send my awareness right into that emotion instead of falling into it, um, unless you feel like it, okay? If you really feel like just wailing, absolutely go and do that. But if you want to explore and you want to bring your conscious awareness into it to get more information, you can do that too. So we're just going to bring our awareness in there. And I'm going to see, let's see. So this pattern absolutely comes from having Chinese parents and no matter what I did it was never good enough no matter you know even if I had 90s in school it still wasn't good enough and so I've just learned to always do more overcompensate and this is the only way that I'm gonna get love to be supported and this is a pattern Whoo! so when we recognize that recognize that pattern let's see if it's a fragment and so let's see if a part of myself so obviously this is a part of myself that is stuck. It's frozen in that reality of needing to overcompensate to prove my worth to my family so I can survive. And so whew, 
here we can call in the support of our team. So I'm going to call and connect with my higher self, my angelic galactic support team. I'm going to ask for my team to help me reintegrate this soul fragment that is frozen in the belief that I need to overcompensate in order to be loved and in order to survive. I ask for support in the reintegration of this part back into my core soul column. And if there is any frozen emotional energies, I just ask for that to be released. And I'm also communicating with the body to say, hey, it's okay to let this go now. It's okay to release this pattern. There are other ways to receive love. There are more com uh, connected and authentic ways to express our love. Whew. And I'm just telling my body that it's okay and that she can release this pattern because the body is holding on to the pattern to ensure that you survive. If you believe that the only way that you're going to survive is by overcompensating, your body is going to do its best to hold on to that pattern and overcompensate because it believes that it's keeping you alive. So when we start to communicate to the body that's highly intelligent, we can say, you know, here's the, I call it the higher self template or the source template you know, or the original template that our authentic self is enough. Woo! Just by being myself is enough to be loved, to be accepted, to be supported. Okay? Woo! And I'm just bringing that energy through with my mind. I'm conjuring up the frequency of saying, I am good enough. I deserve love. And of course, these are frequencies that we already connected to in our higher self. These are the beliefs that our higher self holds as truth. And that's, that's why it is not hard because it's truth to a very powerful core part of you. It's just about connecting that into the fragmented parts. Woo! And so allowing the body to make noises and to move in whatever way that feels right to it for the energy to move. Right? And now I feel the energy move into my shoulder, so I know that there's a network of trauma. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to move into the shoulder now. I'm going to start to move the energy through my shoulder. <coughs> okay, I'm just going to move my body. Maybe I want to stretch that side of my body a little bit just to see how much space we freed up. And I feel like we've already freed up some space. We're definitely moving and releasing. I can feel that, right? So now this energy, I can still feel it in my hip, but it's connected up into my shoulder. My body's asking for me now to look at my shoulder. And so here we go. Okay, so this energy right here, I feel like it's a pressure. It's like when I was little, I felt like I was the psychologist of my family. Like I needed to keep my family together. Anytime my parents fought, you know, I would have to play psychologist, even though I was like nine. And so this gave me a great sense of responsibility. Like I had to figure everything out myself. And I know most of you in this room have this pattern because <laughs> it's just, you know, why do we resist asking the galactics for help why do we bump our heads into the walls when we know that we have god and we have divinity on our side is because there's of this pattern of pressure and you know i kid you not one time i cleared this pattern and i felt like my spine got taller it was like two inches longer because there was so much compression this pressure of feeling like i need to figure out myself i need to fix my family, I need to wake everybody up, I need to heal the earth, I need to liberate humanity, and I'm doing all of this. My human self is going to somehow do all of this, and that's a lot of pressure, okay? So I'm feeling into the body, and I'm saying, oh, I'm so sorry, body. I'm so sorry that I left you on your own defenses to feel all of that pressure. You're just an innocent creature. I can't believe I allowed you to feel all that. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. I'm here now. Okay. I'm going to ask for help. Higher self, galactics, source of all creation. Whoo. 
just asking for support in lifting all of the distortion of burden and pressure of having to do everything myself and figure it all out. I want to give it up to God. And something that they always tell me is that we're here to carry it out, but we're not here to carry it. Okay? And carrying it out looks like dancing in joy and experiencing bliss because we're the examples of what being human is. And I don't know why this um, <laughs> um, falcon is hers. Um, your message is appearing there. Sometimes my computer is just, just doing that. So anyway, we're here to carry it out, but not carry it ourselves. And it was so relieving when I realized that because again, we're just vessels and we're all dancing vessels together. Whew. And give me a thumbs up or a message if you feel like you're, if, if your neck is lengthening and you feel three inches taller, just by lifting the burden and allowing God and allowing our support team to do the work with us to support us, right? It's meeting God halfway because we are creating space. We're creating the space around ourselves to actually receive guidance. We deserve that. We're not here on our own. We have a higher self. We have God. We have a support team. All we have to do is literally believe that we're worthy of that enough to create space around ourselves to access it. And we have, we have access to that literally at any point, in any moment. Any moment that you are feeling sad or confused or, you know, pressurized, you can literally just create a space and you always deserve that and connect in and ask for help. Whew. So unity, love. I um, invite you to explore that pain in the left of your jaw. You know, maybe you even want to like touch it. Okay, so they want me to share these, um, they call it the internal medicines. These are the medicines that every body carry. And I'm writing a book about this. It's just going to take me some time to get it out. Um, the internal medicines that we have are breath, intention, movement, meditation, touch, right so let's try that again movement thoughts or intention sound i missed that one last time <laughs> okay whoo breath touch intention so all of those things work together so let's explore this um thing in the left jaw right so now i want to just put your fingers on it and just really feel it and touch it and then maybe you want to just let out a sigh, like, ah, right? Just to get us a, a little bit deeper into that energy. And then maybe you want to just breathe into it and just like intend to connect to the emotions. And I feel it almost wrapped around the ear. And you let me know what emotion or what you're feeling that's inside of there. For anyone that has a pain in their body right now, I invite you to just Bring your awareness there with a lot of patience and gentleness and just tell the body that you're here for her, right? It's not the body's job to heal and hold space for all of the trauma that we have. But when we're not proactively healing, we do leave that burden onto the body. And that's why then the body gets sick and the body becomes distorted and the body has pain because the body is not built to be responsible for all of our trauma. Except when we're not aware that we can consciously go in with our proactive healing, then our body does become the responsible one, right? Because somebody's got to do it and the body is our hero. And so the body's going to do everything that it can to keep you healthy and processing all of these energies. Whoo! And so the final concept that is coming through right now, the words that they're saying is radical self-love. Radical self-love. 
what that looks like is, you know, always being there for yourself, right? If any moment there was an energy that came into your field that made you feel any kind of way, that made you feel small or little, that you immediately just halt and you find it in your body and you replace it. With the truth frequency or the Christ opposites, right? And it, it helps to go up and connect to the true essence of who you are because for the most part, anytime there's, you know, that self-abuse energy, I'm not good enough, I hate myself, I'm never going to be able to do whatever, anytime those little, like, the itty bitty shitty committee, every time they start going off, get to the higher vantage point where you are that precious divine light that's here to support all of humanity and his healing. Go back to that place. Find the truth in the preciousness of your being and stand up for yourself. Whoo! And say, no, actually, I'm amazing. Actually, I'm perfect. Actually, I am powerful. Whoo! <laughs> it's just a lot of energy flying. It's a powerful session today. Just breathing for a minute and letting all the energies flow through. If you had a physical ailment in the region of root chakra, does this correlate to the theme of the root chakra? So, yes, absolutely. There's an amazing resource called the Metaphysical, Metaphysical Anatomy. You can get a copy of it, especially if you're a healer. I highly recommend it. It's like a textbook, but basically every illness, every disease has a um, has a, a spiritual or emotional or energetic root, and so they have a whole library of all the diseases, you know, like cancer or whatever it is, and they go through the emotional reasons of why they exist. And this book is really cool because, you know, I've had hundreds of sessions where I refer to the book, and every single time people are like. Oh my God, it's, I know, I feel personally attacked. It's talking to me. <laughs> so, let's see here. I have a huge fear of being attacked for a uh, lack of better words. So that's a really good one. So write that one down, Kat, right? Because, you know, we can just go in and find the root of it. I'm feeling it in the back of the left shoulder here, right? And it does feel like a past life energy so I hope that I'm just sending you a little um, like a little sticky tape that you can pull on and hopefully find the end of the tape there <laughs> yeah so you know the hips and the shoulders and for me they're very interrelated and oftentimes, sometimes when we feel it somewhere, it's actually somewhere else, right? Say like you have a muscle pain somewhere and then you really feel into it, you realize that it's actually like a totally different part of your body that's in pain or that's tense, that's pulling on something else, that's making the pain appear somewhere. So, um, how do we deal with body numbness and nerve damage? So um, we can definitely repair our nerves by just like visualizing our body in its holographic nature and then sending source energy and the repair frequency to our nerves. And I think with body numbness, you know, is oftentimes um, 
because we're trying to numb our experience of emotions and this could be ancestral it could be past life it could be environmental so you know diving into that might be a good exploration for you yeah so when you first start doing this you're probably going to experience a lot of discomfort i mean Think of all of the pain and emotions and distortions that we've stuffed down. It's basically everything that's keeping you from just being completely exuberant and in bliss, just reveling in this life, right? This is that, that being aliveness, that joy, that exuberance, that bounteousness, that is our original state of being. And so if you're not experiencing that, then that means that there's things piled on top of that and the further you are from feeling that the more stuff there is to clear out and you know it's always a choice right it's like we can either either be inundated by the amount of healing there is to do or we can say okay i'm gonna i deserve to feel good so if you believe that humanity deserves to be free then you're a part of that and you're a forerunner of that so you definitely deserve to feel alive and to feel free And so beginning with these practices, I found that this is the quickest way for me to process because it's kind of like an active meditation and I'm literally working it out of my system and it'll bring me into past life and present life and interdimensional energies, all of it. So the name of the book is Meta, Metaphysical Anatomy by something Rose. I can't remember her first name, but I think if you scroll up... Um, Cassandra also posted a link to the Amazon. Okay, so without all of that, I feel complete for the day. Um, you know, I there's only so much I can share about this. It's kind of something that we have to take up, you know, in our actions on a daily basis. Because any time that we get triggered, we can immediately go into that space where we are in self-healing. It can be our immediate response to anything. Anytime that we feel out of alignment, anytime we feel depressed, we can immediately go into proactive self-healing and that changes everything because we're basically reorienting and retraining ourself into mastery. And on that note, I can't wait to hang out with you guys. Oh, actually, I'm going to be in Sedona next week. So Saurang is going to be doing... Um, the Starseed Mission support next week. And uh, I will see you guys in two weeks' time. And I love you guys so much. I can't wait for you to put this into practice. I want to hear from you. If you want to do these things, then come back later and write me in the comment section about your experience. I would love to hear it because, you know, we deserve the best and we deserve to be free. And we have the power to journey there. So, we love you. Bye for now.